And I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Ted and Pastor Sanger and Ron forward. Good morning. Much of what I want to say this morning about the Reverend Franklin G. Sanger III, which is how he likes to be named, is um, material that he already knows, but you might not know. So let me share a little bit with you from the beginning. Frank, it was 1951, I believe, that you escaped the ire of the examining committee graduated from the Lutheran Theological Seminary of Gettysburg, and became pastor of Mount Calvary in Mount Jackson, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley. Am I right? Right. So far. It was in 1953 when I first met you at a Luther League convention in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Uh, You had been ordained for two years, and I was just graduating from high school. (laughs) And I was starting to college the year 1953. Right? You really impressed me. You see, the pastor that baptized me was not young when he came to our church, and he was still there when I graduated from college, almost. So most of the pastors I'd known had been old men. Here was Frank Sanger, who was just two years in the parish. He looked like a teenager. He was dashing among the teenagers that were gathered there, And I was impressed. It would turn out over the years that we would share some mutual friends. And once in a while, we'd call one another or write a note and say, have you heard from our friend? Or this or that or the other. And so over the years, we've been close friends. You would serve eight and a half years at Mount Calvary in Mount Jackson. And then you would come to Holy Comforter Church in Washington, D.C., And there you would serve for 50 years in Holy Comforted Church. You you would be a recognized voice across the old United Lutheran Church in America. I almost can't remember that church anymore. And... You were part of a small group of people gathered together under the banner of Una Sancta. You were one of the very first to urge the church into a New Testament tradition of more frequent celebration of the Holy Communion. You were known for that. You were also known to have the, it may have been the second, it may have been the first, but one of only two on the Holy East Coast Easter vigil services. The other was in Reading, Pennsylvania. You were known for that. And you led us again in what we now do here at Good Shepherd. You were first, and you were a churchman. You were a theologian. You still are. And, um, but you were more than that. Not only were the people within the walls of Holy Comforted Church your concern, but the people outside the walls as well. I recall on a rainy night, right after I was elected bishop, trying to find Southeast Area Hospital in the rain. I had no idea where it was. It was before the global systems we have today, and finding it in the dark, in the rain, and I finally get there, and it's after visiting hours. And I said, I'll never get in. I'm here, and they're not going to let me in. So I go in, and I say, I'm Bishop Schneider. I'm looking for Pastor Sanger. And the uniformed officer, now in the place of the volunteer at the information desk, said, he's in room 410. And I said, just like that, you know where Pastor Sanger is? 410. I go up, he's not in 410, he's in a suite of rooms. And I said, Frank, I know you don't earn that kind of sal- this kind of salary at Holy Comfort. It was the first thing out of my mouth. Not how are you? Are you getting well? How's the treatment going? How did you afford this? <laughs> and he said, I don't know. Whenever I come here, they put me here. I would find out later. He was on the organizing committee that founded Southeast Area Hospital. He was on the board of directors for a series of years. And so whenever he went to the hospital, they put him in the suite. 
because he doesn't talk much about himself. He was also part of an organizing committee in the Hillcrest neighborhood in Ward 7 of the Washington, of the District of Columbia. Uh, and they got together. He, he rallied pastors to uh, preach against the process of blocking integration by the realtors doing adva- aggressive selling so that Hillcrest area neighborhood became integrated without violence, without loss of value of properties, and is today an incredible, beautiful section of Washington, D.C., uh, the Hillcrest neighborhood, I think it's called. When they interviewed him for the newspaper after 50 years and, and now retiring, they asked him, what do you consider to be your major accomplishment? Now, they're aware. They've been talking about in the interviews the fact that all neighborhood meetings are at Holy Comforter. They're aware of Frank's leadership in Southeast Area Hospital, former Southeast Area Hospital, and other such things. So they asked him, what do you consider your major achievements in your ministry. And he says, I don't know. I'll let God worry about that. That's Franklin Sanger. He sits in the back on the corner. Many of us know him. I had the honor uh, while I was bishop, and once after I wasn't bishop anymore when the bishop couldn't go, to attend celebrations of Frank's ministry at Holy Comforter. Um, one day I was there preaching the sermon and a siren blasted and somebody said out loud, the fire chief's coming, he's late. (laughs) Because you see, already, already there was the mayor, the police chief, soon the fire chief, most of the members of the Washington District Council, um, and then crowds of people. Well, Adrian Fenty was the mayor at the time, I believe, uh, or shortly before that, and it was Frank, among others, who knew him well enough to convince him that he ought to run to be mayor. Frank, Adrian Fenty's mother, was often present at worship at Holy Comforter. This was a pastor who not only shepherded his people, but cared for his community all Hillcrest Community Neighborhood Organization meetings had a home at Holy Comforter. He melded church and parish. In fact, he said, I can't do things I used to do. For example, I used to do an annual census. There are about a thousand homes in our neighborhood, and I knew where everybody went to church or didn't go to church. I think you said not many admitted that they didn't go to church. But um, he's there about a thousand, and he said, I kept a, a notebook of everybody who was in our neighborhood and what they claimed to be their religious affiliation and tradition. Every year, he did that as long as he was able. I could go on. I've gone on long enough. Sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to prevent, present to you my friend, faithful pastor of the church, We don't all get to live this long. I want to present to you on his 65th ordination anniversary from the synod I also came from, but didn't stay long, uh, Franklin G. Sanger III. Can we greet him? It'll be probably help if you just stay standing because we have a prayer. But, but before that, Frank, yesterday, there's one more thing here. 
Yesterday in the mail, this FedEx Saturday delivery, priority overnight mail, arrived here, and Pastor David received it. Apparently, the word got out that we were doing this. We've kept it a terrible secret. But we are recording it, and when it's over, there will be a lot of people that will have it. In the meantime, this note came, special delivery, Saturday morning priori, priority delivery, and it says, because it was done so swiftly when they found out the news, it's handwritten, dated August 19th, 2016. Congratulations, Pastor Franklin Sanger, for 65 years of pastoral service, the Hillcrest community. Handwritten. Would you like to say anything before I pray? Thank you. I'm, I'm just glad for the privilege of serving. Thank you. And you're letting the Lord worry about that. There's one more prayer that's part of our intercessory prayers today. Let us pray. Most blessed and Holy Spirit, you call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify the whole Christian church on earth, and you keep us faithful until the day of our Lord's coming. So too you call and set aside shepherds to tend the gospel among your faithful and in your world. We give you thanks this day for Franklin G. Sanger III, who in your grace celebrates 65 years of ordained ministry, a faithful shepherd of Christ's people. Over these years, his preaching, teaching, and living your word have brought healing, hope, and peace to untold members of God's faithful within, but also beyond your church, encouraging and teaching them your will for peace and mutual caring of one another. Saints in heaven and on earth give you thanks for this sensitive outreaching and ongoing ministry. Lord, in your mercy, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace of the Lord, Frank.